Let me guess, you're from the town that I love best. Talk Memphis, I wish you would. Talk Memphis, you sound so good. Three Deadly Sins, we're, we're talking about paying too much, over-leveraging, or mismanaging. That's right. Um, and, and when we talk about paying too much, my first thing, you know, as I was making some notes yesterday, was how does this happen with all the tools and all the research that's available out there? Yeah, I mean, that's a great, great question. It's, it is a great topic because, I mean, I remember reading about Sam Zell. He's a big commercial guy, yep. and he was doing this in the, the 80s, you know, 70s and 80s, buying people who overpaid before him, overleveraged before him, or mismanaged before him. So this isn't a trend that's just happening today. This is, right. you know, at least 40 years, if not, you know, for centuries. But overpaying is is common. You would think that people would learn how to not do that. But, but this day and age, you see... Uh, you know, we're involved in social real estate, social networks, and you'll see people yep. getting on there talking about um, this is probably the where I'm seeing it the most right now is in the turnkey space. Yep. You'll see people saying, well, the turnkey price is more than the appraisal. And people are saying, oh, that's OK. It's fine. It's fine. You're buying a bond. You're buying a new new roof, a new HVAC. So they're overpaying the appraised value of the house. And people are acknowledging that and doing it willingly. You which know, is amazing. Which is amazing. It's scary. There, there's no excuse for overpaying, in my opinion, because uh, you're just you're, you. Everything has to go right when you overpay. Oh, and or things have to go above right as far as appreciation and things that they're going to bail you out. No so, exit strategy is the first thing that comes to my mind. No short term exit strategy. Yeah, that's that's to get more no short term exit strategy. Five to seven years to catch. There's up. a turnkey provider that w- in town mm-hmm. who who we will work with and when they have an investor who needs to get out they send them to us to list it that's right essentially to give them the bad news because right. they can't do it themselves because they've put them in a product at a hundred and ten percent of the price and then they come to us and we're trying to list it on the market at a, at a, at a market price and it's probably 90 cents on the dollar of what they paid so if you're in the if you're going to keep it for 30 years you're great okay yes long term it's hard, hard. when I, I worked m- many years ago i was on the the, the lending side mm-hmm. and i had a boss colleague who was a commercial real estate lender and he always said you don't you, real estate investors they don't pay too much they just buy early you know, you're just too early. So, yeah, if you're going to be in this game for 30 years, you you maybe you're buying you're buying early. You're paying too much. It's going to work out. But if it's a short term, five years or under, overpaying more above market value is is careless. Is what I would call a sin. One That's of the right. sins of an investor, a well, deadly sin of an investor. In, in truth, you know, life happens, Douglas. And you might be sitting there looking at your spouse and your partner, business partner, maybe saying, we're in this for the long haul. We're going to hold this. We're going to give it to our kids and they're going to give it to their kids. Life happens. I mean, you never know what's three years down the road, five years down the road. Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm shocked. You know, I've been doing this. 10 plus 15 years. Dan's been doing going on 20 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's the way we think. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm wanting to do this till I'm at least a hundred, Sure. you know, so this minimum. is a long, a minimum, man. And so I'm, I'm, I'm in this for the long haul. I can't tell you. So that's my mentality. I can't tell you how many people we've seen come and go in our brief 15, 20 years of doing this. People who get in and life happens. And have said, I'm going to be in it for forever. Correct. And in, in they're in and out. So it, family tragedy, emergencies, uh, work layoffs, things, things change. You have no idea what's you, coming down. So to overpay for an asset or anything, really, for that matter, but especially an investment, something you don't absolutely have to do, uh, is a deadly sin. It is a deadly sin, and it is it is. You, it's an opportunity for others. That's all I'll say. See, but it's 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 a deadly sin. But there's an the opportunity coin. for other people. We can talk more about that as That's we go right. on. But do you think the market creates this? Any? I mean, do you think? So you mentioned some of these turnkeys. Do you think? Do you think the 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 story and the hoopla around Memphis will create this? Yes, in some sense, yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, there's that lemmings mentality, that herd mentality. Everybody's doing it. Yes, it's okay. 
here's the reason. And, and, and obviously, people who are selling those products are going to justify why this is a, why this makes sense. You're coming to Memphis. You're coming to the hot market. You're coming yes. to uh, cash flow king, as I guess right. as people call Memphis. So I see. I see this also another way of, of saying this, and this isn't turnkey bash. I mean that th- yeah. that's not. But paying for a house on a cap rate in a non owner occupant neighborhood, mm-hmm. to me that that is. You know, an error that's that's a that's a mistake waiting to happen, trouble waiting to happen because at least if you pay in a cap rate, which you know we all know if you pay it by a cap rate, you're gonna be paying more than the than the yep. house is worth on the market. Mm-hmm. In an owner occupant neighborhood, that's okay because if you had to get out, there's an owner occupant to buy it. But if you have to get out in a non owner occupant neighborhood, you know, you, Wendy Greenlaw Chandler reports, who's a good, a good friend of the show, you know, I heard her latest statistics was Frazier 38127 was 76% were non owner occupant. That's right. IE investor. That's so, right. if, so you're selling to, an, to another investor. So you, you have another investor isn't going to pay retail price. No. So again, no. paying a cap rate in a non-owner occupant area, that's something I would, that would be a red flag to me. So you see somebody paying $60,000 in a non-owner occupant area where the <laughs> in, uh, other investors are paying 20, 30, and, and, and get, that speaks to that neighborhood. And I'll get more specific. Uh, we're seeing now some, in, some turnkey providers are building out new construction streets, new construction, even communities. 100% set up for rentals. I, and I don't, you know, I, I would caution on that. All day long. We, we a, again, we had a, one of our very first clients. He was in some deal. I don't remember how he got it, but he had to, it was a, it was a, a business and he had to flip out of that business investment into some rental houses. Mm-hmm. It, it, and they were newly built, $100,000 houses. In the early 2000s, mid 2000s, and then all of a sudden, those things were worth fifty thousand dollars. And then what do you do? And, and they've never gotten back to the hundred thousand dollars. They might be eighty thousand now, but still not back to. But what still he not back to what he invested in originally as new construction. And that's that's and I've seen it happen. And then it's, it's not just one. There's several different groups oh, that yeah. are building new construction streets and communities solely set up for rentals. I just, I, I'd really caution investors on that. I mean, that, that's an overpay uh, hotbed. Again, long term, if cash flow makes sense, could make sense, definitely makes sense on paper. But yep. when you're talking about having to get out of that property for whatever reason, In you, trouble. You, 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 you know, not pennies on the dollar, dollar, but definitely less than market value. Definitely, the, the market value is less than the original price. When we're talking so about money. yeah, absolutely, we're talking about paying too much. I've got Douglas Skipworth here in the studio with me with Crestcore. What are some of the things we can do to avoid overpaying? And you know, my first thing is call your local real estate agent. You know, call Dean Harris. Yeah, call me at Crestcore now. But I mean, no, you, you absolutely. I would say, you know. Lack of counsel, you know, there, there, there's scriptures full of sure. getting advice from others. If you wage war, obtain advice, you know, <laughs> think about, think about, you know, all the, Waging whether it's a war. coaching staff, you yeah. know, your coach, coaches are surrounded, you know, head coaches are surrounded by their staff, yep. uh, political figures are, are surrounded by their staff. So, with, you know, you're making a decision that's important. Have some other opinions, not just the, don't listen to just the person who's selling the house. Absolutely. You know, get some other opinions. And there's some great social re- media, real estate social networks out there. Yep. And there are other investors who are willing to contribute as well as agents like yourself and others. So there's literature as well as, you know, periodicals, websites, blogs that post that can kind of give you some data as well as just back of the envelope and rules of thumb right. to kind of give you. A- so I go through this conversation with about half of my new investors. When we get a new person that calls us, hey, I'm interested in Memphis and they come over, um, I have that conversation with them on, you know, talk to other brokers, talk to insurance agents that, that provide insurance for these. If you're, you know, talk to other investors, Absolutely. a lot of mine will say, do you have some referrals that you can? Sure. I've got a couple of guys here. Go talk to them. Not just about me, but about Memphis, you know? So 
it, and it's property specifically. I mean, I see people mm-hmm. do that all the time on social networks where they drive, hey, I'm interested in this address at this price. What do you think of rent? Here's the rent, what I'm saying. And people will give their honest feedback. And property managers. I, did, I and just thought of that. property managers. You can absolutely. go to them and say, hey, and confirm Yeah, that talk rent. to a couple of different property managers. What, how, you know, what do you think about this? What are you seeing in this market? What right. happens five years from now if I had to get out of this house? That's right. I swear I can't get enough listening to